Welcome back to Engadget at E3. Um, I'm Anita Sarkeesian and I'm joined by Harvey Smith, from co-creative director at Arcane Studios. Uh, you have a very impressive pedigree of System Shock, Deus Ex, the two Dishonored games. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was only the lead <laughs> tester of System Shock, but somehow I get it's credit for it. It's on your Wikipedia it. page. It counts. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Uh, yeah. But I started in games in 93, and even though I've worked on other stuff along the way, I mostly have been dedicated to this kind of blend of RPG and shooter that is a little slower paced and more exploration based. Yeah. Well, so I really loved Dishonor 2. I thought it was just an incredible game, and one of the things that I really adored about it was how vast the world was. Like, I was actually kind of pissed that I couldn't look at everything. Yeah. <laughs> because it was, I just didn't have enough time to uncover all of the story and all of the little details. Like, what goes into something like that? Yeah, it's, uh, it's part of our sort of DNA as a studio. Uh, the Arcane was founded by my friend Rafael Colantonio like 18 years ago. I've been there nine years now. It's hard to believe. I've been there longer than I've been anywhere else, wow. which is surprising even to me. But uh, the level design culture and the art culture there is all about creating a plausible, coherent world that's simultaneously familiar and someplace you've never seen before, and trying to embed as much of the history or the storytelling into the, the walls themselves, you know? Yeah. Uh, now, the downside of that is we do a lot of work that people don't see because we do, like, I don't know, five or six times more work than you can see in one pass of the game. And because it's not like a a multiplayer arena game, you don't just play the maps over and over and over and over. So most people play through once, and you have the sense the whole time that there's more here than you can actually see. Yeah. We like that. Uh, whether you play Corvo or Emily, you have different mechanics. Whether you go this way or that way, there are some missions you can partially skip, you know, so yeah. it's it's a lot of elective content. Yeah, and it's, 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 I love that because it's this world where you can discover all of these little elements, but also I, I got to the end of the game, it was like, I think I missed something, right? And so yeah. you look at forums and you're like, oh, there's all of this narrative about different characters that you don't yeah. get because you may have missed that that artifact. And But there's something still special about that. Like the amount of work that goes into that is incredible. I mean, it's good to hear you say that there's something special about it because for me, for us, it's like a problem to solve. You know, it's like, we love this, but wow, we're spending all of this time and money making stuff that a large percentage of the audience doesn't see, but that's the kind of game that we love, you know, that it yeah. just feels like your decisions actually matter and that you can be expressive in how you play and uh, yeah, yeah. no two players have exactly the same experience. That's very meaningful to us and the degree to which people care about different things in a game like Dishonored is really surprising, you know, because we knew we were making the game for a bunch of overlapping circles, stealth players, people who like the fantasy world, whatever. Um, people who would gravitate toward Corvo or Emily, like, but it's it's really, yeah. really true in Dishonored And Planet. so there is a sense that you are trying to appeal to all of these different play styles, right? It's not just like, well, we have this and this, but not this third or fourth thing. Like, there's so many different ways to interact in this world. Yeah. It's definitely like a seven-headed Hydra or something. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Like. Okay, so, you know, <laughs> I was one of some voices that were very critical of Dishonored 1. Right. Um, it, it, while it was a really impressive game, it wasn't so good to women. Um, and so it was such a treat to see Dishonored 2 come out. And you know, you can play as Emily, the marketing was Emily. It was just this big push and it was very clear that there was at least some conversation that happened internally around that. I'm, I'm assuming that ha that was an intentional choice. Yeah, I mean, I want to answer the question, but I always feel like, even though it's very basic for you, for other people that may be listening, I always want to answer the question like, because some game developers are like, I hate critics. Come try to make a game and then criticize Wait, the game. they don't like critics? Yeah. I've never heard that before. <laughs> yeah. And so I always say, I love critics, uh, because in part, besides video games, I also come from like a literary background, and I've always just felt like, reading the book and then reading the criticism then reading the book again is the ultimate way to experience something. Same with film and it should be true for video games too. You know, everybody loves Lester Bangs, you know, of a certain generation. It's like, here's a person that will tell you how to appreciate more a thing you already love yeah. and also cite the problems with it. So I love critics, I love that kind of stuff. Uh, we internally sat down, well, your comment, which I will always remember, I'll take it to my grave, is um, <laughs> And well, I don't even something know if I like, remember it. <laughs> I'm going to get it wrong too now, watch. And everybody online will be like, aha, idiot. But um, it was something like, while Ga Dishonored is a game that does many things very well, uh, the roles that it has for women 
are very narrow. And, you know, at first you take some criticism, you're like, wait a minute. And then you go look, and it's like, wow, every woman in Dishonored 1 is either a servant, a prostitute, a witch, a queen, or a little girl. I think or maybe, dead. Or, or, or killed. Or killed, yeah. yeah. Right, right. Or a mistress. We have a mistress also. Sure. Um, yeah. But anyway, so, you know, that was not a, an intentional choice. And so when something like that pops up, you can get defensive if you want. Or you can say, guys, let me just ask this. Did we mean that? And the answer is no, we did not mean that. Uh, would the game be worse if we took an action on this, or would the game be better? The game would be richer and more interesting. And so from our DLC forward, uh, the Brigmore Witch is a Knife of Dunwall, which uh, fans really love. That's the first appearance of Delilah, and uh, you get a big, you get to play Dowd, which people love. It's the first appearance of Billy Lurk. We did that in, we, sh we shipped Dishonored in 2012, we did that in 2013. And so we made a deliberate role to bring about more interesting roles. We had a union boss. Uh, you know, we had, uh, I think that's the first place where we introduced our female gang members. And so we just kept extending that to try to hit some sort of more plausible balance in the world. You know, if yeah. you study history, uh, women often get written out of history, of course, but women did just as many interesting jobs and mundane jobs. Uh, as you know, they do today. You know, so yeah. uh, in any case, we carried it over into Dishonored 2. We're very happy we did.